Genesis 21. Genesis 21. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy an Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he was married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master have given him a wife, and she shall have burned him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters and he shall go out by himself. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door, or unto the door post. And his master shall bore his ear through if an all, and he shall serve him forever. And if a man shall sell his daughter to be maidservant, she shall not go out as the men's servants do. If she please not her master, who hath bothered her to himself, then shall he let her by redeemed, to sell her unto a strange nation. He shall have no power, seeing he hath dealt diligently with her. And if he have bothered her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. If he takes him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her dairy of marriage, shall he not diminish. And if he do not these things, three unto her, then shall she go out free without money. If that smiteth a man, shall that he die, shall be surely put to death. And if a man lie not in wait, but God deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place, whether he shall flee. But if a man come presumptly unto his neighbor, to slay him with gruel, Thou shalt take him for mine altar, that he may die. And he that smiteth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. And he that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. And if men strive together, and one smite another with a stone or with his fist, and he die not, but keepeth his bed. If he rises again, and walk aboard upon his staff, and shall he that smote him be quiet. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time, and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. And if a man smite his servant, or his maid with a rod, and he die under his hand, he shall surely be punished. Not through his understanding, if he continue a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his money. If men strive and hurt a woman with child, so that her fruit depart from her, yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished, according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot by foot, burning for burning, wound by wound, Strike for strike. And if a man smite the eye of his servant, or the eye of his maid, that it perish, he shall let him go free for his eye's sake. And if he smite out, smite out his manservant's tooth, or his maidservant's tooth, he shall let him go free for his tooth's sake. If an ox gore a man or a woman that they die, then the ox shall be surely stoned, and his flesh shall not be eaten but the owner of the ox shall be quiet. But if the ox were wont to push with his horn in time past, and hath been testified to his owner, and he hath not kept him in, but that he hath killed a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned, and his owner also shall be put to death. If there be laid on him a sum of money, then he shall give for the ransom of his life whatsoever is laid upon him. Whether he hath gored a son, or hath gored a daughter, according to this judgment, shall be done unto him. If the ox shall push a manservant, or a maidservant, he shall give unto their master thirty shackles of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. And if a man shall open a pit, or if a man shall dig a pit, and not cover it, and an ox or an ass fall therein, the owner of the pit shall make it good. Give money unto the owner of them, 
and the dead beast shall be his. And if one man's ox hurt another's, that he die, then they shall sell the live ox, and divide the money of it, and the dead ox also they shall divide. Or if it be known that the ox hath used to push in time past, and his owner hath not kept him in, he shall surely pay ox for ox, and the dead shall be his own. So I'm preaching what the Bible says about abortion. Okay. So this may be a difficult. Uh, it's may be difficult to talk about these things, and sometimes it's better not to think about it. But sometimes it's good to be re reminded on what the Bible teaches about abortion. Because in Canada there are some pretty messed up things going on every day. Now I have two main reasons why abortion is wicked. Okay. The first reason is abortions are a severely cruel murder. And we are told by the world that abortion is not murder, and it's just a group of cells. So I googled what happens when you get an abortion, and I'm not, I'm not gonna go into very much detail, uh, but what the doctors do is that they put a tube in the womb, and they suck out the baby using vacuum, all while the baby is alive. So now any normal person would look at those facts, they should be able to stand against abortion because the fact that abortion is a severely cruel murder. Now I found some s statistics about abortion. Um, did you know in 2018, there were 85,000 babies killed in Canada? And I think 23,000 of those were in Ontario. So that's very bad. And that's pretty disturbing too. Now to prove that the baby is alive, not just a bunch of cells. The Bible says that life begins at conception. So turn to Isaiah 714. Isaiah 714. Bible says, Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. So this is foreshadowing Jesus Christ. And this is foreshadowing what happens in Matthew 123. So we can turn to Matthew 123 and see what it says. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted, God with us. So you may ask that, is it a virgin shall conceive, or is it a virgin shall be with child? Well, it's birth, both, because at conception, it is a child. That's one life. And it doesn't become a child 24 weeks later, or two weeks later. When there's conception, that's when there's a child. And notice, it doesn't begin as a blob of cells, and it eventually turns into a child. The Bible is clear that when there is conception, there's life. God says, a virgin shall conceive, then he says, a virgin shall be with child. Now, the abortion crowd wants us to believe that the group of cells eventually turns into a child, but that's false. Bible teaches that it's a human being even before the body is formed. So this is proven in Luke 139. days, and went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leapt in her room, 
and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord shall come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leapt in my womb for joy. So we, he, we see here that a baby in the womb has joy. It experienced an emotion when it was in the presence of another woman who was also with child, and that child was Jesus. That baby leaped in her womb for joy, and people might ask, how could it do that? I'll tell you why, because it's a human being. And it's also proven in Jeremiah 1.4, so we can turn there. saying, Behold, I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the room, I sanctified thee, and I adorned thee a prophet unto the nations. See, God had already given identity to Jeremiah. Even before he had a baby, he had a body that had been formed in the womb. And here's the truth. Every single child that is killed in the womb, God had already given identity to had already given a purpose to them. And for Jeremiah, God had already sanctified thee, and he ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So God had already made a purpose for all these babies in the womb that unfortunately gets killed. So the second reason why abortion is wicked is because it attacks people with disabilities. And here's why. When the woman is in labor, sometimes the doctors will tell her that that the child has Down syndrome or some kind of disability. And it's okay to go ahead and abort the baby. To look at a child with a disability and to say, well, let's just kill it because it's gonna be too much work for us, that's pretty messed up. And that's the world that we are living in. So turn to Matthew 19:13. brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray and the disciples rebuked them but Jesus said suffer the little children suffer means allow and forbid them not to come unto me for of such is the kingdom of heaven see notice the heart of our great savior when God looks down at a child with down syndrome or some kind of disability he loves that child and there's something very wrong with a person that would look at a baby with a disability and say, this child is too much of an inconvenience, so let's just kill it. That's pretty messed up. And our country thinks that we are so civilized and up to date, and yet every, all this is happening in the most brutal way possible. Uh, turn to Galatians 5.14. It says, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Notice the word love. You need to teach people to love thy neighbor as thyself. You also need to teach people that if they were a baby in the womb, how would they like to be treated? I don't think they would like to be killed. If a baby was in a room and it was unwanted, what would the baby hope that someone would do? So, and I mean, these ladies, if they don't want the baby, the least they can do is just give birth and put the baby up for adoption. Uh, there's all sorts of great parents and Christian parents out there that would love to have a baby, 
They would have loved to take your baby and to raise it. But these ladies are so selfish that they would rather kill it. Now, all abortion is wicked. And I don't care if it's early term, midterm, late term. Abortion is murder. And these politicians that are saying we're pro-choice and it's a woman way, right, to choose, they are also guilty of all the murder that's been happening before God and the innocent blood that is being shed. But see, this country thinks that it's okay to kill a baby in the womb. But at the same time, you can go to prison for shopping. So, turn to Exodus one twenty two. Exodus one twenty two. Says, and Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born, he shall cast into the, into the river, and every daughter he shall save alive. So, what can be more wicked than taking a newborn baby and killing it? If you can just imagine just destroying the life of an innocent child. But today in Canada, this is considered normal. See, and in the Bible, the Egyptians were throwing babies into the, into the river. Nowadays, it's kind of the same thing. Instead of throwing babies into the river, they're going out to the abortion clinic, they're going out and buying birth control pills. Now, the abortion crowd always wants to tell us that abortion and using birth control pills is good because the world is overpopulated, which is also not true. If you've ever been out into the countryside on a road trip or something, do you see all that empty land out there that can be habited? Now as Christians, we need to be armed with arguments and knowledge to be able to tell others on why we believe that abortion is murder and why it's messed up. We need to stand firm on the argument that life begins at conception before there is even a body, before the baby is even complete. It's already a person and it's alive. And when you end that life, that's called murder. Now the best thing that we could do to end abortions today is the same thing, just to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And get them saved, and then teach them, make them aware of all the mysteries of the gospel. Now, what's the point of this sermon? The point is that we should raise awareness about how bad abortion is. Uh, most people in Canada think that abortion is okay, but we need to tell our friends, our family members, our co-workers, that abortion is barbaric and unacceptable. And it's not something that we should support, especially Christians. I'm not saying that we should bring abortion up in every conversation we have, but when it's appropriate, we should stand up for what we believe. So uh, turn to Proverbs six sixteen. Six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Proud look, lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Mm -hmm. Notice that, hands that shed innocent blood. So that's babies being shed. And continues on, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift, running to mischief, false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. All right. Um, turn to Psalms 139, verse 13. 
says, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, that my soul knoweth right well. All right, so God makes us all wonderful in the womb, or alive. And, yeah, so we covered why abortion is a severely cruel murder, and why it attacks people with disabilities. And I'm sorry it's, this sermon is kind of short, short. I didn't really have much time to work on it, but that's basically it. Okay, so thank you. Um, we can pray. Uh, do you have any